touch the Lord as He passes by. Hi, this is Reach Out, and I'm Dr. Jerry Lynn, pastor of Reach Out Fellowship in Albany, New York. Welcome to our program. Today, we're continuing our verse-by-verse study through the entire Bible. We're currently in the book of Ezekiel, and as always, let's ask for God's help. Father, we're very grateful for this chance to study your word. Help us to understand it and be changed by it, for we ask it in Jesus' name, Amen. Let's continue our study today with Ezekiel chapter 1, beginning in verse 22. Ezekiel is having an encounter with Almighty God. God is commissioning him for the ministry ahead, a very difficult ministry to tell the people that God is going to bring Judah into captivity unless she repents because of her idolatry. Beginning in verse 22, we see this awesome period, period in his life where he sees God. The likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was like the color of an awesome crystal stretched out over their heads. We saw last week that he was talking about the cherubim that were leading this cart, this throne on wheels, if you will, of God. The cherubim, of course, protect God. We see that in the little box, the little Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place in the tabernacle in the temple. And these cherubim are, in a sense, pulling or moving with this cart. And over that cart is this expanse, this firmament, much like we see in the book of Genesis, as God has this firmament and it's not just empty space, it's space that somehow is compact uh, because nothing of God's is empty, to be sure. And this firmament is above the heads of these living creatures, these cherubim. It's like the color of an awesome crystal. It's very clear, very beautiful, uh, stretched out over their heads. Verse 23, And under the firmament their wings spread out straight one toward another. Each one had two which covered one side. Each one had two which covered the other side of the body. So these wings are protecting them and protecting the throne of God. Verse 24, When they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of many waters, like the voice of the Almighty, a tumult like the noise of an army. And when they stood still, they let down their wings. A voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down their wings. So as they move, there's this awesome voice Uh, that's like the voice of God. Nothing here on earth could possibly compare. Some have thought that it might be just a small representation to go to some great falls like Niagara Falls and hear the rush and the roar of those waters, but that would pale by comparison with the awesome voice of God. A voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down their wings in modesty and protection. Verse 26, And above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. So we find this firmament now, and it contains the throne of God. And the throne in appearance is like a sapphire stone, uh, like lapis lazuli or a, an azure blue stone. Very beautiful, I'm sure. And on the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. He does not say that he sees God, for to see God would be to surely die. But he certainly is in the proximity of it. He sees a form like a man. Very interesting, isn't it? Because we know that uh, God is a spirit. And the only part of the Godhead that would have a human form that we can understand uh, would be the Lord Jesus Christ. Could this be Jesus in his pre-incarnate, before birth form? Also, from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the, the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around. 
So the general color of uh, what he perceives to be God here is amber. That would be kind of a dark orange-yellow color. Again, he doesn't see the exact form of God. To do so would be to perish. And uh, from the appearance of his waist and downward, uh, he saw the appearance of fire with brightness all around. God is fire. He purges, he purifies, and uh, gives us strength. Fire can do many things such as that. It can really burn out the dross. It can strengthen a particular metal. Uh, certainly provides warmth for those in a cold environment, like the pillar of fire by night in the wilderness, not only providing light for the Israelites, but also much-needed heat in the desert, which cools down substantially at night. Verse 28, like, what, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so is the appearance of the brightness all around. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So we see again this rainbow which Revelation talks about as well. Uh, a rainbow which was a promise that God had given to Noah that he would never destroy the earth again by water, and so he will not. The next destruction will be by fire. As we're talking about God as a fire, that fire is going to uh, totally destroy this heaven and earth because of sin, and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. This reminds us of the throne room of God in Revelation 4. Just taking a moment, we're going to see that he who sat there, verse 3, was like a jasper and a sardius stone. A jasper was a diamond-like color, and sardius would be a ruby red color. There was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald, which of course would be green. So we see here a beautiful picture of the color of God, the majesty of God, the power of God. And he says, verse 28, like the appearance of a rainbow on a rainy day, so the appearance of the brightness all around. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So the Lord is gloriously represented here, and he's like a rainbow. He's like glorious color, like a great promise of keeping one safe, and that's the God that we know as well. So when I saw it, he says, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice of one speaking. Chapter 2 now in verse 1, he hears the voice of God. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. Now, this is one of the perhaps four examples we have in the Old Testament of the Holy Spirit entering someone. Now, that's rather commonplace for us because the Holy Spirit enters all who come to Christ after the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. But in the Old Testament, we see God coming into people only for a particular time. Saul, David, uh, here we see Ezekiel, and the Lord enters for a particular purpose and then he leaves. But thank God you and I have the Holy Spirit within us, and he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. So the Spirit entered me, set me on my feet. I heard his voice. He said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day, for they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. Now, verse 5, As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. So they're going to know that you've been sent by me. Verse 6, And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions. In other words, there are going to be enemies against this message, even as there were enemies against Jeremiah. Jeremiah was prophesying at the same time. Jeremiah was in Jerusalem. Ezekiel is in Babylon both being commissioned to warn Judah to repent or go into captivity. He says, Don't be afraid of their words or be dismayed by their looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. So don't rebel against me, Ezekiel. Whatever I give you, you take that and you give it to them. 
Now, when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. The scroll represents, of course, the Word of God. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. So he has a scroll in this vision that's been handed to him, God's word, and unusually it is written on the back as well as on the front. Usually a scroll was written only on the front. Perhaps this means that God had much to say to the people in captivity, And so, therefore, the volume would indicate writing on both sides of the scroll, even as you and I write on both sides of the paper or photocopy front and back when we have a lot to present. So God is going to use Ezekiel to bring forth this message to a rebellious people, repent or go into captivity. And, of course, the ones he's speaking to in Babylon are already in captivity. Ezekiel may have also been reaching some people who were in Jerusalem. Perhaps some of his messages were written down or taken verbally. We don't know for sure. But the message is largely to those in captivity, you're going to have to turn around or your captivity here is going to be very difficult. If you want to be restored into the land and restored to God's blessings, repent. Well, good message for us. Let's go to the Lord now. Father, help us to heed the words of Ezekiel and to repent from our rebellion. We want to go our way at times. Forgive us and turn us in the right way. Help us, Lord, to always seek your face, to humble ourselves before you, not to take you lightly. The vision we saw today is that you are awesome beautiful, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. We love you and worship you, our sovereign Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to invite you to stop by and visit with us here at Reach Out Fellowship if you're anywhere near the Albany Colony area. We are located at 218 Osborne Road in Colony, several blocks north of Albany Central Avenue. We have Sunday morning services for the whole family at 1030 and Thursday evening services for the family at 7. Again, that's Sunday mornings at 1030 and Thursday evenings at 7. We also have a prayer and healing service on Tuesday nights at 7. You and loved ones are welcome to come, and uh, we'll be happy to pray with you, anoint you with oil, and lay hands upon you in the name of Jesus for healing. God's healing plan is always through Jesus. He carried our sicknesses. He carried our pains as well as our sins, and we look to him to be our complete healer for spirit, soul, body, finances, and relationships. We are a full faith, full gospel church, believing in all of the gifts of the Spirit for today, and we go through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, making explanation, illustration, and application of these verses for our lives. Check out our website for information about our church and our Bible Institute with its free courses in the fall and spring of the year. Log on to reachoutfellowship.org or reachoutfellowship.com. Click on radio and archives and play these radio programs right on your own computer at any time. You can write to us at Reach Out Fellowship, 218 Osborne Road, Albany, New York, 12205. And if you can enclose an offering to help with the cost of getting God's Word out in this area, we'll be most grateful. And because you're giving, you'll be blessed. And you can visit us at Reach Out Fellowship, 218 Osborne Road in Colony, again, just north of Albany Central Avenue. And you can call us at 518-482-4565. That's 482-4565. And remember, reach out to Jesus and reach out to one another with his love.